Let us begin by reading the opening scripture verse, which is Psalm 97, verse 9, printed at the top of your bulletin. Together we say, Lord, you are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Derek's prelude is, Come Thou Almighty King. All who are able, I invite you to stand when you hear the chimes. The Lord is with you. Now our call to worship. Let's give thanks to the Lord. And celebrate his most wonderful feast. Sing to our God, sing praises to him. We magnify his holy name. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. For he forgives our sins and heals our heart's diseases. Let all who have breath praise the Lord. That includes us here, you watching at home. We welcome you to Farringdon Church. Let's begin by singing our praise, Be Thou My Vision, 502.
Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. This week, uh, we have just a pretty usual week for our midweek programs. We have our junior youth program tomorrow from 6.30 till 8, and then we have our kids club program on Tuesday from 6 till 7.30. If you have any children or grandchildren, or neighbor friends who you think might be interested in these programs, I'd encourage you to connect with me. Also, for everyone involved in these programs, we always need juice boxes. It seems like we always need juice boxes around this church. So if you are able to donate some, you can simply just drop those off in the narthex, and uh, we'll use those on a Monday or a Tuesday. Also, encouraging everyone to save the dates, July 8th through 12th for our summer VBS. Uh, right now, we're about 60-70% full. Um, so I just encourage you, if you have a child in your life you think would enjoy that program this summer, um, it's going to be a great time. It's a perfect program for the younger kids in your life. If you have five, six, seven-year-olds, it's just a half-day program. Uh, so if they've never done anything like camp, or that before, it's a great chance for them to come out. And again, it's a great opportunity for the older students in your life to start thinking about being leaders and hanging out. Uh, again, because it's just a half day program, so it's not too much for anyone. And it's not too much for adults to volunteer either, because you still have an afternoon to yourself. So if you're interested, or if you can help, um, lots of needs from registration to helping in the kitchen with snack and even teaching some Bible lessons. So if you're able to help out, I'd encourage you to connect with me. It's going to be a great week together. Also, for anyone on the Christian Education Committee, we're going to have a meeting following service this morning. So I just encourage you to stick around and head on down to the boardroom after church. Welcome again to our church fellowship today. We're glad you've come. And uh, if you're visiting, we ask that you sign our guest book and we'll give you a little thank you gift in, as a result of that. Also, we have refreshments at the end of the service, coffee, tea, and cookies, so on, cold drinks. So if you want, just stay, stay around for a few minutes and we can get caught up before we head out into a new week. And I met Daniel for the first time today, and I welcome him to our choir. And if you were here earlier, he was playing piano, a duet with Derek. So we're appreciating his musical ability. Thank you. Let's welcome him. There's a lot going on this week, so let's walk through the weekly announcements. And I'm sure there will be something here for you so that your spiritual input is not limited to just Sunday morning, Sunday morning, Sunday morning. You can come and fellowship in smaller groups throughout the week. So like the men's breakfast, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. at Angel's Restaurant, you order whatever you want, pay for what you want. Then on Tuesday morning, we have the adult Bible study in the conference room. And this week, it's Romans chapter 9 and chapter 10. And we watch a video first with Pastor Max Lucado, and then we go into the scriptures and discuss what we heard. The ladies meet Wednesday, May 8th at 1 p.m. That's ladies' aid. And then if you're on the advisory committee, you meet Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. And Mother's Day is coming. Look at that. Prepare your gift now. So you're set for next Sunday. And as usual, our second Sunday of the month, we have corporate communion. Hi. Yes. The reason the office is closed on Thursday is for um, Tammy to be able to go to a, um, or what do they call this thing, conference with yeah. Stephen and from the burial realm to, for burial and ground information. So this Thursday, the office is closed just this week because Tammy has to go to a conference to learn more about burial ground rules and so on. And so you won't be able to reach her on Thursday. 
Now, happy birthday, Judy Sangster. That was yesterday. <laughs> and happy birthday today, Stephen Sprague. On the 7th, it's Michael Scordino. And then on the 8th, Amy Perry and Fiona Potter. May 9th, Ann Butler. May 10th, Pat McGraw and Clara Martin. And then May 11th is Steve McDougall. He's the superintendent of our burial ground. So we ask God to bless each of these with a great birthday and an even better new year. And as we say, if we miss your birthday or anniversary, let us know. Let Tammy know in the office so we can get it on for the next time. All right, let's turn to God's word now. The first scripture reading is Psalm 71, found on page 502 in the Old Testament. In you, Lord, I have found refuge. Let me never be put to shame. By your saving power, rescue and deliver me. Hear me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which at all times I may come. You have decreed my deliverance, for you are my rock and stronghold. Keep me safe, my God, from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of the pitiless and unjust. You are my hope, Lord God, any trust since my childhood. On you I have leaned from birth. You brought me from my mother's womb. To you I offer praise at all times. I have become like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth will be full of your praises. I shall tell of your splendor all day long. Do not cast me off when old age comes, or forsake me as my strength fails, for my enemies whisper against me, and those who spy on me intrigue together, saying, God has forsaken him. Harry him and seize him. There is no one to come to his rescue. God, do not stand aloof from me. Come quickly, my God, to my help. Let my accusers be put to shame and perish. Let those intent on harming me be covered with scorn and dishonor. But as for me, I shall wait in continual hope. I shall praise you again and yet again. I shall declare your vindicating power, declare all day long your saving acts, although I lack the skill to recount them. I shall come declaring your mighty acts, Lord God, and proclaim your sole power to vindicate. You have taught me from childhood, God, and all my life I have proclaimed your marvelous works. Now that I am old and my hair is gray, do not forsake me, God, until I have extolled your strength for generations yet to come. The word of the Lord. Turn in the New Testament to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And if you want to follow, that's page 193. As for me, my life is already being poured out on the altar, and the hour for my departure is upon me. I have run the great race, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith, and now there awaits me the gar garland of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on the great day, and not to me alone, but to all who have set their hearts on his coming appearance. The word of the Lord. This is the Gospel of Luke, chapter two, verses thirty six to forty. That's found on page 51 in the New Testament.
Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to be a sign that will be rejected, and you too will be pierced to the heart. Many in Israel will stand or fall because of him, and so the secret thoughts of many will be laid bare. There was also a prophetess named Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was a very old woman who had lived seven years with her husband after she was first married. And then alone as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. Coming up at that very moment, she gave thanks to God, and she talked about the child to all who were looking for the liberation of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had done everything prescribed in the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew big and strong and full of wisdom, and God's favor was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. The choir is singing, God hears all the praises soar.
Before we pray out loud together the Lord's Prayer as it's printed, I'd invite all of us just to bow our heads for silent prayer. And I'll mention some of the sick that we know about. You pray for them in the silence as well as for those in your family who need God's help. Tom, and Brian, Graham, Wayne, Warren, Michelle. Father, we thank you that your ears are always open to the cries of your children. Whether that's a silent cry or a spoken aloud cry. And so thank you that you hear us and you will answer us according to your will. As we pray now, how you taught us to pray, Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. He's got the whole world in his hands. Number 80 in the hymnal, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. And kids, we'd love to see you come up on verse 3. So when we sing, he's got the tiny little baby, you be up here to meet Caitlin, all right? Lots of smiles during that song. It's hard not to smile, isn't it, when we're singing that song. So, this morning, we're going to talk about fighting. Have you ever been in a fight before? Look at the sister staring at her other sister. Not like a fist fight. Okay, what about, how else can we fight? with our words, that's right. When we talk about fighting, it's not usually a good thing, is it? No, usually it's one of those two things, a fist fight, a physical problem, or more often it's fighting with our words, maybe yelling, or saying mean things, right? 
But today, in our Bible lesson from 2 Timothy, we hear about a man who's fought a good fight. Do we ever hear about good fighting? No. We don't usually describe fighting as good, do we? So the man that's talking is a man named Paul, and he had spent a good chunk of his life teaching people about the good news of Jesus. And so he is writing a letter to a young man. Did this? That was weird. And he's teaching Timothy that Timothy now needs to also fight the good fight. Good fight. This idea of a good fight means fighting for something that is good. We might also say struggling for something that is good. Listen to this verse again that we heard in the Bible. It says, Fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. See, Paul was fighting for his faith. He was fighting to teach others about Jesus. He struggled to teach others about Jesus. He struggled so much that people put him in jail where he could only teach others about God by writing letters. And so we are challenged to continue to fight that same good fight that Paul fought many, 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 many years ago. It's not a fist fight or a fight with our words in bad ways, but it's a fight to stand up for what we believe in in a world that doesn't believe the same things we do and to stand up for Jesus. So that's our challenge this week. Is in a world full of people who tell us to do this or that, that maybe doesn't honor God to fight and stick up for what we believe in. That good fight that Paul is talking about. So, shall we pray together? Then we'll head on down to Sunday school. So let's clap our hands together. You can close your eyes and you can repeat after me. Dear God, at times our lives are challenging and we need your help. May we be people like Paul who fight the good fight to represent Jesus in our world. Amen. My topic today is one that we all share in common, called Getting Old. Whether you're 20, 50, or 80, we're all getting old. And some don't like to admit that. Like a lady I was reading about named Betty. She was having a lot of chest pains and trouble breathing, so she called 911. The EMT came and started asking her personal questions like, what's your name and how old are you? And Betty said, I'm 50. And um, the EMT wasn't convinced. So he said, ma'am, when's your birth date? And she said, I was born March 1st, 1970, 1974. 
And he still wasn't convinced. Anyways, he put the oxygen sensor on her finger and hooked her up to the machine. And she said, what, what's that for? He said, it's our new lie detector test. <laughs> now, how old are you, ma'am? She sheepishly said, 64. From 50 to 64, just like that. Others don't mind sharing their age. They're proud of the gray hairs they have achieved in life. Like this couple, the Moffats. They met and married in their nursing home. He was 86, she was 90. And they decided to go downtown to the general store to uh, shop for their wedding. This was a stationery store and drug store and food, everything, you know, a typical general store. And the groom-to-be asked the owner of the store, do you sell heart medication? <laughs> yes, he said. How about Depends? Oh yeah, we've got a good assortment of those. Hearing aid batteries. Yes, we're stocked up on those. What about Asper cream or Bengay? Yes, we got all those too. Do you sell walkers and wheelchairs? Yes, we have a whole section for mobility. Well, what about those new uh, scooters for seniors? You know, the electric ones. Yeah, we got three models to choose from. Good, he says. And he turns to his bride-to-be and says, Honey, we're registering here for our wedding. <laughs> See, the key is not how old you are but how you are old. And we keep hearing that 40 is the new 20 and 60 is the new 40. The age really doesn't matter as much as our state of mind and our purpose for living as we get older. This is why I want us to focus on Psalm 71 today. As we age, uh, it's natural to worry about. Will my money last? Will my health last? Will my mind last? We all want to have old age security, to know that we'll be taken care of in our last years. And Psalm 71 addresses this. King David wrote it. And we know he's old at this point in his life when he writes the psalm because he says in verse 9, God, do not cast me away when I'm old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. I think David was a little worried about his old age security. Will my health last? Will my faith in God last? And this is never the concern of young people. When I was young, I had no clue that someday I'd be a grandpa and sitting in a nursing home. Young people just live in the moment. But as we age, those issues become front and center. And I think David's got old age and even death on his mind because, well, listen to verse 3. He says, God turns people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. At every graveside we say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Because entering the grave is a must. It's appointed unto every person that we must die. And that's what David talks about, verse 5 also. He says, God sweeps people away in the sleep of death. They're like the dew of the morning. In the morning they spring up new, but by evening they're dry and withered up. Doesn't sound very positive, does it? That we're going to be dry and withered up? But it's the truth. Life is brief. We start out fresh and green, full of energy, 
And then somewhere along the line, everything starts to go downhill. And the older we get, I'm sure you've noticed this, the faster time seems to fly. Wasn't it just Christmas a few weeks ago? <laughs> and now we're staring at Mother's Day and soon Father's Day. Well, David captures this in verse 4. He says, a thousand years are like a day that has just gone by, even like a watch in the night. Now, a watch in the night back then was a three-hour shift, like 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. David says a thousand years are like a few hours as we get old. And since this is true, how might we live? That's his focus in Psalm 71. How can we have security in our old age, knowing time is rushing by and one day we will sit or lie in a grave? Well, here's what he says in verse 18. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation and your mighty acts to all who follow. So the key for David in his old age was God. God was his old age security. Is God your old age security? And the only way to answer that is if God is your current age security. Because who we are at 80 is very similar to who we are at 40. And who we are at 40 is very similar to who we are at 20. In other words, we don't change much. I've rarely seen people come to a stronger faith in their senior years than they lived when they were younger. David says the key to old age security is not having a monthly government check. And it's not making sure our investments are paying out constantly. The key is, do I have a right relationship with my maker, who is my heavenly father? We're all told to prepare ourselves financially for retirement, and we do. But do we prepare ourselves spiritually for retirement and old age? Well, I read here in Psalm 71 that David did. It's very clear God is not only his creator, but sustainer through life, through all the ups and downs. He says in verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. In other words, Lord, you've been our home. We've made our home with you. He says, before the mountains were born, or you created the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are our God. So old age security comes when we know God is our creator, our provider, our sustainer, our father, and our friend. And, and this isn't just academic or theoretical knowledge. No, knowing God personally is what makes us secure at every age of life. Not only in this world, but of course, in the world to come. Listen to David's personal language. He describes God with this relationship of I, me, and my. It's very personal. He says in verse 1, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Be my rock of refuge, on which I can always stand. For you are my fortress. 
You've been my hope, Lord, my confidence since I was young. From birth, I have relied on you. And so I will ever praise you. So this whole psalm describes God and David like this. That close. How does God seem to you in your life? Is it, well, he's way up in the distant clouds and I don't know where he is because... Is it that kind of gap? David says that gap can be narrowed. It can become literally as one, up close and personal is the security God wants to give us for our old age. And you know the Bible's full of examples who knew God and served God while they were quite old. I think this is on purpose. I think it's to remind us how God values us at every age and especially when we're old and people want to put us out to pasture. And government says you're a burden that we have to get rid of. I was shocked to read this statement by a politician who is defending our government's MAID program. He said, I quote, because government has only so many resources to share with the needy, those who are terminally ill and very old have a duty to die and get out of the way. That would suggest you have very little old age security and reason for living, according to some people. But God says very differently. He called Abraham and Sarah to start a family. At what age? 99. She was 90. He was 99. And because of that very old couple, God has blessed every nation on this earth. He made Joseph the finance minister of Egypt. And Joseph served with distinction until the age of 110. Joseph, as a super senior, saved the entire world from famine. God called Moses to lead the Jewish slaves out of Egypt. Do you know at what age that was? 80. And Moses was their leader from age 80 to 120. God gave the Apostle John a revelation of what's to come while he was in prison on Patmos Island. And that was at age 90. And John wrote those down, those visions, and so we have the last, almost the last four books of the Bible from that super senior. Paul, at age 60, starts sailing around the world to tell people about Jesus planting churches and paying a price for it, as we heard. I can name about 50 examples that the Bible gives us of people who didn't quit before their time. They kept serving God in their old age. And we know it's true outside the Bible as well. Winston Churchill, Prime Minister at age 65. Margaret Thatcher, first female Prime Minister, age 53. Golda Meir, Prime Minister of Israel, age 72. Colonel Harlan Sanders, you know what he invented, right? At age 66, his first restaurant. And some ladies from Farringdon Church in their 70s were taking mission trips to Africa to help the children at the Home of Hope. And some of our members at age 80 and beyond 
are helping Caitlin with Vacation Bible School. God bless you. you. That is old age security. When loving God and helping those he's put in our path are the two reasons for living, then you have found what you're looking for. It's not how old we are. It's how we are old. And David prays, God, when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me till I declare your power to the next generation and your mighty acts to all who follow. David knew that in his old age, he still had a job to do. Yes, his days of defeating the giant Goliath are behind him. The days of defending his dad's sheep with bare hands. It says he, he, he ripped a lion apart and he scared the bears away. All right, he didn't have the physical strength anymore. But he said, I'm still not done because God, I have a mission. And that mission is to declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts, to all who follow. This is so important because every generation seems to become less godly. When my grandparents went to church here in Canada, churches were full. When my parents were in church, churches were three quarters full. I'm in church, church is half full. My son John is an adult, what will it be? A third full, a quarter full? That depends on us, friends. Will we live in such a way and talk to them in such a way that they can see God is real? God is to be worshipped. He is to be feared and obeyed. For that is what gives us security at every age in life. Those under 40 need to see us in worship here and at home. They need to hear from our own lips the stories of what God brought us through, including our own failures and our own sins, because they need to know God is full of mercy. So another story on the news about a house fire. In this case, two girls ages 12 and 14, they were cooking after school because well, their parents were still at work. And oil in a pan caught on fire and uh, spread to a box on the counter and the girls panicked and they got water and they poured that on the fire and that just made it bigger. So they ran out of the house screaming for help, and a neighbor did call 911. And thankfully, the firefighters were able to douse it with uh, $300,000 of damage, it said. But here's the thing. That house had three working fire extinguishers, including one in the kitchen. But the girls didn't even know that. They were never taught where the extinguisher is or how to use it. And it almost cost them their lives. There's a big difference between knowing about a God who exists and having a daily working personal relationship with that God such that whenever tragedy or anything happens, we can at a moment call out in prayer, Lord, help, Lord, save, Lord. The younger generation doesn't need rules as much as they need to see a relationship that they can have and that we have with Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. I want to close with this prayer that David prayed and 
if you want, pray it after me. I'm going to do it Caitlin style. I'm going to do just short phrases. And if you would like this to be your prayer, pray it aloud or silently. But here's what David prayed. When I'm old and gray, keep me close to you, O oh God, so I can show the next generation how good you are. God says to us who make that our prayer, here's his answer in Isaiah 46. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who sustains you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who sustains you. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. God is the old age security each one of us needs. Amen. Derek's going to play the offertory, and again, we thank you for your financial gifts can leave them at the plate in the plate at either door and if you're visiting this is not for you this is a day for you just to be here and enjoy the service and let our members pay for the ministry that happens here
And all who can, let's stand to sing the doxology. Hymn 84, O God, our help. This benediction is from the end of Jude. Now to the one who can keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory, jubilant and above reproach, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord who is before all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.